before I introduce Francis, there's, there's a poetry venue in Canberra called Smith's Alternative, and there's poetry there quite often, but regularly on Monday nights, and it's, and it's been a fantastic venue for poetry in Canberra, and some of these people uh, go there quite often. But you've got to have a good venue, don't you? Francis Carlton is a Canberra-based therapist, crocheter, dog mum, Lego minifig minifigure enthusiast, snake wrangler and poet. She mostly works in tanker but throws in a freedom of or sequence when fire blinds just isn't enough. Her poems have appeared in Skylark, Pressure Gauge, Eucalypt, uh, Atlas Poetica, A Journal of World Tanker, Bamboo Hut and Poems to Wear and um, Potpourri of Poetry. Yeah, Potpourri of Poetry. That's the best one. Yeah. That's the best one. Yeah. Okay. Francis Carlton. Thank you. So I'm going to take you on a bit of a journey. It's going to start pretty low and kind of a bit sort of deep and meaningful, and it's going to finish on a bit of a high. So, starting with Cradle of the Grave. Muff is dead. I was at dinner. 3,500 miles away, and I finally understood the pain of my life so far away. The umbilical cord doesn't stretch that far. Button tin. I sit with my legs crossed, tip the contents out, scattering reds and blues amongst the bones, some on their skins, others on crumpled cards, most nestled together. I watch over ladybugs that can't fly, anchors that won't sink, kittens with six <coughs> straight whiskers, flowers with no scent, sharks with no bite. Snipping orange scissors, turning fabric sheets into magic, pinned tissue as her guide, vogue and simplicity inspired, the next move, the next stitch. I care less about decorum, much more about comfort, comfort, one leg straight, enameled ice cream cones peeking from behind discs with holes. After years of play, sorted, like with like, neat and tidy, sorted out, neat. My legs spread, I can't cross them anymore. Green and earthy highlights, conversations of divorce, hers then mine. Twi twi twisting the string of diamante, ending near, but the sparkle never faded. What happened to Muff's button tin? I gave it to the lady down the road because she sews a bit. <laughs> I once said, you're the only constant in my life to my mum. She died. So this one I heard, um, I heard Penelope Lane read a poem recently called Irregular at that poetry thing that happens every Monday night at Smith's. And it's called Razors. If I could use a word for my feelings, it would be one with bite. Edges, spikes, jagged sharp points, teeth gnawing at my flesh, scratching at my insides, clawing to be let out, heard in all its acid and rage. But these are represented by one word, one that rolls from the tongue with its soft vowels and mmm sounds. Mourn. Full stop, ending a sentence dead, a comma, causing a pause in breath, and together they saved my life. I'm copying Rojo, it kind of looked cool. All I can think now is that I've got to pick them all up at the end. <laughs> So 
we're only a few days away from Anzac Day, and I had the absolute um, honour of being involved in the 5,000 Poppies project when we planted a beautiful display up at the War Memorial. And I wrote this over the course of the four days planting poppies. It's called Why Plant Poppies. Aching muscles scream loud, my thighs tight, the blisters in the palm, a line of sunburn on the back, just above the waistband, just below the dome of the tomb. Four days we've labored hard, hands and knees, entry softened with spikes, holes filling after exit wounds. The battle repeated, thousands of times repeated. Each one handmade with love, far and near, the crimson face stitched fast. Followed by stems knitted in French, hours given freely for the hours and the lives given freely. Grain heads lit a field, aged lives lived, gossip and laughter drift across the site marked with grids, mending the broken ones for memories of the lost ones. A hundred years later, selflessness remembered by loved ones, 62,000 lost to war, the poppies recalled, 14 to 18 recalled, lest we forget. change the tone a bit. This one um, does kind of lighten the tone. It's a tanker sequence and it's about my husband, ex-husband. He's still alive. St yeah, still, hang on, still alive. <laughs> it's called Snake. <laughs> Food, swallowed whole, mouth open, face distended. Watching you eat is tough. <laughs> Curled up under the covers, blood warming. Enjoy the sensation as I shrink from your touch. I listen as you expound, nod and grin as you spit. No venom on me. Eyes clouded over ready to shed, snake loses his old skin. I left on a Friday. of the teens. Asked straight up, do you want to fuck? I considered long and hard the offer. Yes, but not with you. <laughs> <laughs> One day, a straight, buff, single man wearing no shirt will follow me on Insta. I believe in unicorns. <laughs> okay, a few more. So my tend to be quite short, but this is one of my longer ones. And this is, um, this is a, bit, a little bit about the single life and you know how, the, how you meet people. And the beauty about being single is I've really come to appreciate myself as a human being, but also the relationships that I've formed, that I've formed that are friendships rather than relationships. It's called Messages from Space. Separated by distance, we reach out. Sparks fly by radio waves, instant messages and Skype. Somehow, humour we share translates solo words, handwritten poetry, emoticons transmitted in single lines. We laugh under the same sun, partitioned in our own spaces, an hour apart, Brisbane, Cloncurry, and Canberra. Music spanning the ages, character, and dubious taste. Shorthands our messages, letting us know when we crave connection. 
Images enhance the shared intelligence, recipes, cabling, and native wildlife, while the articulation of the subtext ripples under the surface, our mutual monitoring achieved. A chance meeting under dishes while ordering lunch, our first steps together towards a deeper understanding of ourselves, each other, the meaning of life and aloneness. to afternoon tea. Boil kettle warm, bone china, scoop per person plus one for the pot. Angel cake, sponge jam and cream to keep it moist. Soft for the forking around the plate. Wrap tongue around, let it slide, slide down, nice and moist. Lick the lips, clear the throat. So, want to come? <laughs> <laughs> 